Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jason O'Doom. I'm a cybersecurity engineer at Blue Island. And today I'm going to introduce you to CICD, the whole uh, CICD process. So here, here's the content. Here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to cover uh, what CICD is, what it looks like, what it isn't, uh, developer operations, because I feel it's difficult to talk about uh, CI, CD without talking about DevOps. And then I'm going to go into uh, the DevOps pipeline, what that looks like, and also some uh, deployment um, methodologies, and also why you should use uh, CI, CD. So the first part is, you know, what is CI, CD? So we have two parts. We have CI and we have CD, right? Can, the CI stands for continuous integration, and the CD is just continuous delivery. So it's how you take, you know, uh, the process or code, code, and then you, you know you deploy it or you, you deliver it and send it to uh, production. So that whole process is is CI/CD. Well, let's dive a little deeper into into uh, what it means. Right, code is committed frequently. That means, uh, you know, every couple of minutes. The reason why this is important is because it allows us to avoid. Uh, merge conflicts or issues in the future and I'll get into that a little bit later. But not only uh, not only do we commit it frequently, we also test it. The testing is really important because as it moves through different stages or environments into uh, to production, we have to make sure that any errors are caught before you know the whole world uh, sees them before the end product uh, you know is used. Okay, so in order for this to make sense, we have to look at, you know, how things were done in, in the past. So in the past, you have two developers. Developers, you'd have, you know, let's say Bob and Alice, and then they'd code together. Maybe Bob would work on the same uh, document as Alice without them knowing. And then when it's time to uh, combine those changes or merge, merge is what they're called, then there'll be, you know, lots of merge conflicts. So essentially what Bob and Alice were doing was making changes to the same specific part of the code. And that just doesn't make any sense if you think about it, right? Because it's hard to track changes if you, if you don't uh, commit them independently. But if you try to commit them at the same time, it, it gets really confusing. So in order to avoid this issue, that's why this whole process uh, you know, was created. You know, I like to think of it as philosophy. Maybe it's me being dramatic, but uh, it, that's that's really what it is. You know, it's more than just uh, you know tools, as you'll see uh, as we move along. You know, it's it's more than just Jenkins or you know Ansible or whatever. It, it has to be this. This process doesn't work without you know. If you don't have this process, the tools, the tools are meaningless. So it's very important to have you know to put this in place, uh, communicate with your teams, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, try to change the culture within your your business in order for this to actually uh, work. All right, so this is, this is the new way. This is how we solve the problem. We're committing code uh, frequently, right? We're not waiting uh, an hour or two. We're not waiting for, uh, for days. We're doing it instantly. Whatever changes we make, we commit. This way, it's also easier to track. This is actually what's recommended when you, uh, you, know, when you commit. Uh, something to you know a version control. It doesn't have to be Bitbucket. It doesn't have to be GitHub. It can be GitLab. So whatever whatever your business decides to use, uh, this is what you do. You commit every single time you make a change, and then you push it right, and then it gets tested. And when that test uh, passes, sorry, you push it. It gets built, and then that build gets tested. And if that build uh, passes, only when that build passes, then it gets pushed to uh, production. Right, but it really depends uh, on you because I've seen I've seen it uh, differently. You know, different different uh, you know companies uh, have have a, a similar process, but it's not always the same. Some people would will choose to you know get rid of that development environment and just go straight to the testing environment. And then you'll have a staging environment. And then you'll have a production environment. So it depends on what works for you. All right, so this is what it looks like. 
you basically have your source, your version, version uh, control repository. It can be GitLab, uh, GitHub, or Bitbucket. And then you, you'll uh, push it to dev or whatever environment. Then it'll get tested. And when that tests, and if that test passes, it moves forward. If it doesn't pass, if it fails, it's going to move backwards. And then it's going to get fixed and then move it forward, forward again. And then you have your tested environment, uh, which is always good to have right, for quality assurance. And then you push it to stage in. If the code on the testing environment in the testing environment passes, and then here, this is very important. This is what uh, distinguishes uh, continuous deployment from continuous delivery. Between uh, the testing, the staging environment, and the product environment, is a manual uh, procedure. So it requires manual approval. So in the previous stages here, we just saw automation. From source to dev to test is all automation. There are no human interactions. This is why, this is what makes the process fast because everything happens by itself. No one's intervening. But between here, before we push in production, we, we need to check to make sure if it's good, we need an okay. And when we get that confirmation, then we push the production. And now that I've mentioned that, let me show you what continuous deployment looks like. All right, so this is not what it is. CICD is not this. CICD isn't just tools, as I, as I mentioned in the past. Here we have continuous deployment. I know some, some businesses are doing this, you know, but this is also kind of risky because what we're doing here is we're taking source, we're building from source and we're pushing to test. And then if the test passes, we're gonna push it to prod. That's it, we're not gonna have a staging environment. We're not gonna get users to play with our application and then we're not gonna and catch you know, additional issues. You know, we're just gonna push it right to production. It's really risky. But you know, as I mentioned before, you have to do what works for you. Maybe you don't need that develop, development environment. Maybe you just need the testing and the staging. And of course, everyone needs prod, in my opinion. But you know, let's move on. All right, so it's very hard to talk about CICD without talking about DevOps. So developer operations is where this, this whole process comes from. This whole, this whole process doesn't happen without you know, DevOps. So CICD is the DevOps uh, process. So you have people in development, right? And people in operations and they collaborate. In the past, they didn't do that. And that's where all these issues you know, arose. So devs and people in ops collaborate and they work on this and they try to push their code out as quickly as possible. But here's, here's more information on developer operations. So we use the pipeline to automate this whole uh, process. So as you saw in the previous slide, when we had uh, our, our dev environment, we had the source uh, box and we had the dev environment and you know, all, the other, all our other environments. Uh, in between the source, or actually rather the source, that whole, that source box represents the pipeline. For example, Jenkins is, you know, as a pipeline. Jenkins will build your app, it will test your app. Everything happens on Jenkins. The only thing that doesn't happen in Jenkins is the deployment. You, as a business or as a person, choose what deployment procedure or application or method that you want to use. And I'll get into that uh, more a little later. So yes, the pipeline is part of the process, but it is in the process. Like as, as I mentioned, the process is this, is this uh, quote unquote philosophy. And it requires people to come together uh, to plan and decide what is gonna work best for them. So here's, here's how that looks like, all right? So in the DevOps pipeline, we have our CI server, our continuous integration server, and example of that are Jenkins, Travis, CI, AWS code pipeline. Uh, Jenkins is self-hosted. You can host that yourself. Travis is a service. So, you, you know, you, you pay for that. And I, what I believe is a free tier uh, also. And of course, you know, everyone's familiar with AWS. And then we have the storage repository. So what the storage repository is, is basically we have, uh, when we build the application, we have an artifact. The artifact is just the result or you know the outcome of that application, you know the quote unquote compiled version. We push that uh, that version or or the application to a repository, sort of like you know how we store source code in uh, Bitbucket or GitLab. 
but there are repository uh, managers created, you know, just for this. So we have JFrog Artifactory. You can even store them in S3 or even Docker, Docker Hub. If you're building Docker containers, you can tag them appropriately to manage different versions. But then how do we move these artifacts, these versions from the repository to production or wherever environment that we want to deploy to? And that's, that's where you know, the CD platform comes in. You have to choose the CD platform that makes sense for your, for your business for your, or for your application, your workflow. So we have many uh, different options such as Ansible, Spinnaker, CircleCI, GitLab, or you can even use GitHub. And Ansible is pretty, uh, pretty painless. Spinnaker is feature rich. You can do a lot of things with that. And here's more uh, details on what that looks like. So to break it down, uh, think of this as more of a detailed image uh, compared to the previous one I showed you uh, with uh, you know the whole box method. So we build the application from, well, we pull from source control, and then we build from source. When we build from source, we execute those unit tests. And this part will look different depending on you know teams. You know, I know, you know, most teams aren't running unit tests. Maybe they're running smoke tests or, or some other tests, whatever makes sense for you, uh, depending on, you know, the size and time that's available. But unit tests are usually a good way to go. And then if that passes, that's going to move to the testing environment where uh, QA is performed, you know, checks are made. And then here's the part that you wait for approval. If everything is good, then it's going to move forward to production. And there are different uh, deployment strategies. So here are some of the deployment strategies. You have uh, blue green where you have uh, two different versions. So version B is released alongside version A, and then the traffic is uh, switched to version B. And then you have AB testing where you have a version B is released to a subset of users under a specific condition. And then we have the recreate deployment strategy where version A is terminated, then version B is rolled out. And then we have the atomic version, atomic deployment, where we basically uh, deploy uh, by assembling. This is actually really helpful if your application is huge and has a lot of files where you copy, you know, uh, the new version of an app into a different, a separate directory or location. And, and then once that's done, once that's ready, provision everything ready to be uh, served to the user, then you switch the symlink and then you, you, you publish uh, that version and no one rarely knows this. It's called zero downtime, zero downtime deployments for a reason because you're meant to basically publish a new version of the app without you know, taking down the whole uh, instance, the whole website. And then we have canary uh, deployments where uh, new features are rolled out to selected, uh, select users. And then we have shadow uh, deployments, which are similar, which is similar to uh, the atomic deployments because deployments happen, but no one really knows, right? We have two production servers, and then we test, we see if there, there are any issues. You know, version B receives real world traffic alongside uh, version A and doesn't impact anything because no one knows what's going on. And that's, that's the shadow part of the deployment. So here's, here's why you should use it, you know. You want to move fast, but you don't want to break anything. You you want minimal issues. Uh, it's it's not it's it's hard to say that you know moving to uh, DevOps, moving to excuse me CI/CD is error prone. There will always be errors. There will always be issues. Uh, it's almost unavoidable. But moving to CI/CD helps you avoid these issues. Uh, I didn't really get uh, into DevOps, and that was on purpose. Uh, there was a, a presentation that was given about two weeks ago by uh, Steven Tarana, who's also at Booz on DevOps. And that's, you know, I highly recommend you watch that. But I can't, I couldn't talk about CI, CD without mentioning a little bit of DevOps. So it's important that you automate your, your workflow, automate uh, your code. When you push code, make sure that, you know, it always gets tested. If, you know, I think one, one takeaway, one huge takeaway is always test your code test before you, you push to production. If you don't test, then you're gonna have lots of issues when you deploy to different, uh, well, hopefully different environments. And then you hopefully you can catch them before it goes to production. 
But if you're doing continuous deployment, then <laughs> good luck because you know you're probably going to deploy uh, lots of bugs, and then you're going to go down and have uh, lots of problems. So yeah, deploy deploy to multiple environments to help limit those issues. And this just basically allows you to, you know, developers to focus on development. That's what developers should do. They shouldn't have to worry about uh, systems. So yeah. If there are any questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the chat. 